Hi guys, Tech James here. In this video, I will be showing you guys the best SNES emulator you can get for your Nintendo Switch that isn't RetroArch. So if you guys want to go ahead and do this, the first thing you want to do is just power off your Nintendo Switch completely. So hold the power button for a few seconds, wait for this menu, scroll down to your power options, press A, and then press A on power off. So the first thing that you will need to do is just go and remove your Nintendo Switch's SD card and now connect the micro SD card to your PC. Now guys, on your computer, I will leave a link to the GitHub page in the description and here is PSNES 2.1. So it actually lists all of the um, updates and fixes that it's currently had and there's actually some pretty good ones on here. So as you can see, it now has full screen modes. That's mainly the reason why I'd want to play it and there's a few other like um, error fixes and stuff like that. So all you want to do is scroll up and just click on the zip file and then it will begin downloading. So it's a very small file, roughly five megabytes in size. So once that has finished downloading, just head over to your PC's downloads folder. Now I've also got two types of SNES ROMs here. I've got um, the Adams Family game, which is actually an SMC ROM, and I've actually got Super Bomber Man, which is an FFC ROM. So both of these types of ROMs work, but get the zip file, right click and extract here. It's then going to give you this PSNES folder. Make sure you select both of your ROMs and just right click and copy them. Go into the folder, go into the ROMs folder and just paste them in there. So it's entirely up to you where you get your SNES ROMs from. Um, obviously you can back them up yourself. Um, it's entirely up to you where you get them. So back in the downloads folder, we actually want to copy this folder to our Nintendo Switch's SD card and we want to put it inside of the Switch folder. So go inside of there and right click and paste it inside of here. So no matter what custom firmware you're running, um, this will work as long as you put it into the Switch folder. Right, so once it has finished copying across, you can just check all the files, just make sure they're all here. And now you can disconnect your SD card from your PC, put it back into your Switch, and I will show you guys what to do next. Right, so back on the Nintendo Switch, we can now simply just put our SD card back in. And now you can power on your Nintendo Switch, but you want to boot into your custom firmware, so I will be using my SXOS just to boot into the SXOS custom firmware. So you guys should be well aware of how this works right now, but just quickly, got my RCM jig in, got the dongle in, I'm just going to hold the volume up button and the power button at the same time. Until I see the SXOS boot screen, then I can let go, and I'm just going to boot custom firmware. And now once you get the Nintendo Switch logo, uh, you can just remove everything and put your Joy-Con back on. Okay guys, so on a Nintendo Switch, once you're booted into your custom firmware of choice, just open up the album because we will need to access the Homebrew channel. So just over on the Homebrew menu, just look for the app. It is called PSNES, so here is my one. Uh, just press A or tap it just to launch it up. So this is what the emulator is going to look like. It will display all your ROMs on the left hand side right here. And basically what you want to do to edit the settings is just tap on the plus button up here and it's going to bring up this menu. So there's a few options at the top like show icons and stuff like that. And they're not really that interesting because the settings that we're interested in are the emulation and the joypad. So if you just press A to go into emulation, um, there's actually some stuff you can change. What you use is um, right on the D-pad right here, and you can actually scroll through um, everything. So as you can see, we've got full, um, we've got two times zoomed in, uh, three times fit. Um, the best one is probably full. I'll leave it on the normal one right now just to show you. Um, you can just press B to go back. Oh, there's also show FPS. I'll turn that on in a minute as well. So press B to go back. We've also got um, joypad so if you press a on that you can configure a load of settings in here but let's just press b to go back on that and now just press the icon again uh, the plus symbol just to close out of the menu so with the roms very simple find the game you want and just press a on it and it will begin loading up so here we're just going to play um, the adams family a 1994 game so as you can see sound fully works and the game's quality is very good 
So let me just show you some quick gameplay just to prove it works. There's no real lag or anything like that. Um, pretty much every single game will be above 60 FPS and you won't really notice any delay. And the colors are very good and the screen looks very good. So to quit out back to the main emulator, you need to press plus and minus at the same time and it's going to come up with this mini menu. So what I would recommend doing is just scrolling down to exit and then just pressing on A. So this is going to just exit you back to the main menu and now we can configure some options. So press the plus symbol again, go down to emulation and just press A. We're going to change the screen size, so press right on the D-pad. We're going to set that as full. We're also going to put show FPS and we're going to turn that on. There's also some effects and filters on here which are kind of interesting. Um, what should we do? Should we just turn one on just to see what it's like? Let's turn CRT easy mode on. I'm, I have no idea what that does, but let's find out. So just press B to go back. And now you can just press the plus symbol again just to exit. And this time, let's press A and let's launch up Bomberman. So as you can see, the FPS comes up. The sound works perfectly fine. I have actually got a CTR effect. I am actually kind of noticing it. Maybe the colors don't look as vibrant. It does look a bit like a CTR TV. So you can just start a normal game or um, anything like that. And also the plus works as like a start button, which is why you have to press plus and minus to open up the menu again. But the games work perfectly fine with full working sound and everything like that. I'm pretty sure you can even change settings like with the emulation while you're in the game. So let's just press A on that. Maybe we'll put it back. Oh, there you can see. You can see it's actually changing as I scroll through. So, oh, that setting looks very interesting. This really does look like a um, sort of CTR TV. but it's probably best keeping it on normal or sharp or just something like that. So that is pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys this emulator because it is completely free. It's pretty cool. And if you don't like RetroArch, then this is a very good alternative. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.